Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, good day, folks. Chris KY4CKP here, and uh, today we're going to bring you some testing we did recently uh, on a beautiful late fall day here in central Kentucky. We took the uh, urban assault vehicle out and went to Battlefield Park to do some more testing with the drive-on antenna mount and a nice copper J-pole that's configured for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Just wanted to do some testing uh, as possibly using it for field operations. I've tested the uh, Yagi beam antennas, but sometimes you might be out, out of cell phone range uh, helping to provide communications, similar to what we did on the recent Jeep event, and you might want uh, omnidirectional coverage. So uh, with something like the drive-on antenna mount, and this is just a, uh, a, a time sped up uh, view of, uh, of driving down to the park here, uh, but you can uh, potentially set whatever kind of an antenna you might want on a drive-on mass like this. Uh, keep in mind, folks, there can definitely be times and places where we don't have the ability or luxury of just throwing an antenna up in a tree. There can be any number of reasons why that's not possible. Uh, at this park where I'm going, Battlefield Park, you're not allowed to do that kind of stuff. You're not allowed to, uh, in some cases, uh, in some places around the, the U.S., certainly, you may not be allowed to drive anything into the ground, uh, throw things up into trees. So uh, you may be working an event where you're on a blacktop parking lot. So having a system like this of some kind where you could put up some sort of a temporary mast, it could be something bumper mounted, uh, there's hitch mounts, uh, we have things like that for our emergency communications trailer, but having something like this can come in really handy. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get here to the park and we'll go ahead and set things up and uh, start doing our testing. So we're going to bring you folks right back with our first segment. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and today we're back out here at Battlefield Park, where we've done some antenna testing in the past, and uh, it's a sunny, uh, beautiful day here in late fall in uh, central Kentucky. Uh, it's in the 60s, and probably one of the last days like this we're going to have. Uh, at least you certainly won't be able to count on too many more of these. So uh, I wanted to come out and get back out in the field and do another antenna test at this location. We've shown from this location before uh, that even though the mobile setup I have for uh, 2 meters, 70 centimeters is pretty good in my vehicle, that using the drive-on antenna mass that I built uh, and having those options of 6, 12, or 18 feet up uh, definitely makes a difference. We've tested the 3-element uh, Yagi and the 6-element Yagi and... Uh, of course, having a beam when you're trying to reach a specific point that may be a bit distance is always helpful, uh, but having height also makes a big difference. Well, today what I want to test is I recently took down a nice classic copper uh, J-Pole that uh, KB9VBR uh, built for me. He makes antennas, also has a very nice YouTube channel if you've not checked him out. Uh, be sure and do so. Uh, his antennas are well built and reasonably priced, and uh, I've used it for a couple of years. Uh, worked great, uh, you know, 30, 40 miles or so. Had it about 25 feet in the air, and I just recently took down the uh, the mast that I built because I've basically replaced it with a a, a galvanized steel push-up mast in the backyard, where I have the six-element Yagi pointed to our club uh, repeater that's a pretty good distance away, probably 70, 80 miles and uh, I can reach in with that. And so I thought, well, I've got this nice copper J-pole down here, and I've got the uh, the drive-on mast. I should test that. I should go out and test, does the uh, design of the antenna compare to the mag mount that's on my car, which is a pretty decent antenna, does the design make much of a difference? Will the height make all that much of a difference? You know, we, <laughs> excuse me, we know that a beam will make a big difference. How about a regular uh, omnidirectional type antenna? So we're going to test that today. 
and uh, you know, it shouldn't take too terribly long, assuming we can find somebody to talk to. So uh, let me get set up for the first test, and we'll bring you folks right back. Okay, here, folks, I'm just showing the uh, view that we have here in the parking lot at uh, Battlefield Park. Uh, very similar location to where we've been before, uh, give or take a parking space or two. Uh, and this is about 52 miles away as the crow flies, as we like to say, from the club repeater site. And it's pretty much about the edge of what my mobile radio uh, and antenna can handle. All right, folks, we're about ready to do our first uh, test. So sticking with the uh, mobile setup here in the car, I'm going to see if I can contact uh, anybody on the receiver, see if anybody's there that could uh, spend a couple of minutes and test with us. So we'll uh, do a test and see if we can reach anybody. So let's just see if we can reach anybody around. And we're set up on the receiver on the main site on the ID5100. Let's see if we can reach anybody. KY4CKP, mobile, looking uh, for anybody who may be able to help me test an antenna for a couple of minutes. All right, folks. Well, I was uh, doing a radio call, uh, looking for anybody that had time to help me test uh, antennas today. I'm reaching the repeater from this location today, uh, as is usual if I reach it at all from this location it is pretty scratchy. I can hear the, the repeater ID itself. So I know I'm making it in. Uh, it is fairly scratchy. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the J-Pole antenna uh, using the first six foot section of pole for the drive on antenna mast and see if I'm at least still hitting the repeater. And I'll continue to look for somebody that can uh, maybe give me some signal reports. And we'll see if we can uh, test this out and see what kind of results we get. So I'm going to switch over to the JPOL antenna and uh, we'll do some more testing and we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we are now attached to the drive on antenna mast with the Yagi. It's up, not quite six feet out there on the mast, but let's see if we're still able to hit the repeater about like we were. So bear with me for just a minute, and we'll see if we can at least hit the repeater, maybe see if anybody's available to give us a report. KY4CKP Mobile testing antenna at Battlefield Park, south uh, east of Lexington. Can anybody give me a signal report? Yeah, Steve, I'm just out here today uh, trying to test an antenna, doing a little bit of filming for a YouTube video, and I've got a copper J-pole on the drive-on antenna mast, and it's at about six feet, and I just wanted to see how I was doing compared to my regular mobile. I heard the uh, repeater ID, and it was pretty scratchy. Uh, you're coming through pretty decent, a little noise and everything, but pretty decent. How do I sound? All right, well, good deal. Thanks for the comeback. Uh, I'm gonna do two more tests. I'm gonna put uh, another six foot section in and then a third six foot section test 12 and 18 feet. Don't know if you have a couple of minutes, but if you're still around when I do my next test, feel free to come back and we'll see how, if it gets a little bit better as I get a little bit more height on the antenna. So this is KY4CKP. Uh, I'll be clear for just a couple of minutes and uh, then I'll come back with another test for whoever may be available. And it's good talking to you, Steve. So we got a good report, and that did sound better than the mobile radio. Uh, still some, some static and so forth, but uh, I would say it was definitely better. So let's put another six-foot section of pole on the, on the drive-on, and we'll try this again, see if it alters the results. I'll bring you folks right back. KY4CKP for KY4YUG. All right, I've now got 
two sections of the mast in for this drive-on antenna uh, using the copper J pole. Uh, uh, it seems like maybe you're uh, coming through a little bit more clearly for me. I'll uh, probably be able to tell on your comeback. How am I sounding now? You are a little clearer, uh, and you're putting out full bar on my, of course you're hitting the repeater, but uh, you're putting out a full spectrum and it's, uh, it's sounding better. Try it on the, uh, with the bigger extension. Roger, roger. We'll put on the third pole and we'll give it one more try. So uh, bear with me just a couple of minutes and I'll be right back. All right. Well, my camera's having a little bit of trouble focusing with the sun right now, but uh, uh, got better. It got better getting up 12, uh, almost 12 feet in the air. Let's try uh, almost 18 feet in the air. So we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, we're going to try another contact with KK4YUG. See how this third section does. KY4CKP for KK4YUG. All right, well, you're still sounding pretty good. Probably the best, uh, maybe not a dramatic difference for me between two sections and three, but you're uh, definitely sounding a lot better than just my mobile rig. Uh, how do I sound now? Getting clearer with every section you put up, sir. You're, I can, you're very, very, very easily to understand. All right, well, sounds like another um, success that height definitely makes a difference with your antennas, especially mobile or in the field. And uh, uh, even with a J-Pole compared to the Yagi's uh, at this park, Battlefield Park, uh, it still makes a big difference to, uh, to get up in the air. So thanks for coming back for the test. I'm going to go ahead and break down now, and you will hear yourself in a future YouTube video. This is KY4CKP, and I'll be clear on your final. Roger, roger, KY4CKP. Uh, but yeah, you're doing very good with it. it. It got clearer with every section you put up. Congratulations on your test. This is KK4YUG, and I'll be clear. All right, so another good test uh, showing height makes a difference, whether you can get something strung up in a tree or uh, create your own tree with something like a drive-on antenna mast. Uh, wherever you go, antenna design, of course, if you need directional capability, a uh, beam, a uh, Yagi antenna, of course. Um, and if you need omnidirectional or want omnidirectional, even a J-pole, they're going to benefit by having more height on your antenna, on your mast. So this is KY4CKP. We'll wrap this one up for now. And we'll see you folks in the next video, 73. All right, folks, KY4CKP, just to wrap this one up, uh, as you just heard, uh, I can reach the repeater with my normal mo mobile antenna, but it is definitely pretty scratchy uh, from this location, Battlefield Park. Uh, putting up the uh, copper J-pole, which is omnidirectional, uh, at six feet was pretty good. Got better at 12, got better at 18. So height is always a factor we want to work with anytime we're deploying antennas, whether you're going to have a permanent or semi-permanent antenna at your QTH or whether you're mobile, uh, whether you're hiking, camping, uh, on a field deployment, whatever it is, we want to make sure we can have good solid field communications. So uh, that'll wrap this one up. Another positive test, uh, whether it's a omnidirectional antenna like a uh, J-pole or uh, a, a beam like a Yagi antenna, height makes a big difference. So for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.